Okay, the commission I'm doing for the Arts Council's 70th anniversary. That's because of collections. Oh my oh. goodness gracious yeah. me. Okay, the, <laughs> the commission I'm doing for the Arts Council collection's 70th anniversary. The Arts Council collection is the largest loan collection of modern and contemporary British art. We buy art from emerging artists at a critical point in their career. And most of the best known artists in post-war British art are now represented in the collection. This work is then made available for galleries, museums and public buildings across the country and abroad. We are celebrating our 70th anniversary this year in 2016 and we decided that we would like to commission artists to mark this occasion and it's a different approach from buying a finished work. It means working with the artists from the very beginning and supporting them. It's about my fascination in science fiction and landscape and the way in which landscape has been used both as a kind of mythical space and a futurological space in order to kind of unearth notions around, around ecology, around civilization, around um, urban space. To be commissioned means a great deal in terms of my own practice. I mean, there are a range of issues which I've wanted to explore and a range of um, technical processes which I've wanted to, to explore. And it's great um, to be able to bring those together in terms of a substantial piece of work. I do have to say, I think it's an incredibly bold thing on the part of the Arts Council to commission a work you know, to go into, into its collection. Because in a sense, you have no idea what the work will be. It's a sort of act of trust in order to allow an artist the kind of space in order to make a piece of work. The collection exists as a way of giving a snapshot of contemporary practice. It's also really important as an artist, um, simply because it can be seen by people, which I think is incredibly important. The piece is called Here She Comes, which is actually a longer quote by Charlotte Gilman Perkins. And overall, it's quite a bombastic, unapologetic, energy burst. So part of the performance will actually have a, an attempt to break a world record. Um, how many whoopee cushions are sat on in 30 seconds. I work under the illusion that I'm doing things myself and I like making self-funded projects. So it's quite interesting for me to make a commission because the, the strangeness of it is that you're making something spontaneous and there's this responsibility to hand it over to a collection and to manage to make that mayhem and excitement packageable. But it's hard, but I'm into it. I'm, I'm, I feel like it's not like I've suddenly become establishment. It's more that I feel like I'm proud and ambitious to try to make it still work within such a formal space. My commission for the Arts Council collection is based on two paintings I've made before. It's set around a, a kind of barbershop in South London, predominantly kind of uh, black African Caribbean. For the commission, I want to kind of bring the figure more into play. So the way I'm seeing it is that now, it, it's about some of the mirrors, the figures, posters on the wall, and the conversation that's kind of going on between these characters. I kind of see them all as characters. I've been collecting images, so it's just starting to think about how these images will start to work with, with each other. It's a complete honor to uh, to be taking part in the commission now. So the chance that you could be exhibited in all different parts of the world, a kind of an important thing just for the work to be seen. My project for the Arts Council collection 70th anniversary commissions is a suite of multiple video and audio reframes constructed within a series of sculptural vignettes. Broadly speaking, visually, it includes outscaled hard copy printed emojis human scale soft toys as kind of surrogate genderless beings, which for me also has to do with care, human animal relations, and of course fantasy, all of which are recurring themes within my work. I've called the commission true to size, a slogan which is taken of course from advertising or product packaging, because it's really subjecting scale as an objective fact as both a physical and virtual property, by which I mean emotions as much as perceived dimensions to various kinds of pressures. There is something qualitatively different, I think, about knowing that the work will go into a collection, especially one as important as the Arts Council collection, 
Perhaps that difference has to do with finitude, conservation, preservation, commitment, the weight of history. A lot of stuff actually, which my work, which is made out of these very low-grade, demotic, modifiable materials, is in contention. So it's really interesting and challenging for me to place the work in advance of its existence in that context. My commission for the Arts Council Collection 70th anniversary is to make a mirror ball of every solar eclipse. So that's going to be roughly 80 centimetre mirror ball where I've collected over 13,000 images of every solar eclipse that's been documented and it's organised in a sequence across the mirror ball that will create a kind of animation on the wall as if uh, the, the moon was eclipsing the sun. It's really important for me as an artist to have been commissioned for this award because it was an idea that I had a while ago that I, I really wanted to bring to life but also it's been really important to me in my practice in general because I've been able to delve into this whole new world um, in astronomy and use a whole number of different production processes that I've never worked with before. But also it's just wonderful to have the work in a national collection like this and for it to have a life after the first show at Somerset House but it's going to be lent out you know, over its life. So for any artist that's a brilliant thing. My commission for the Arts Council collection was that I wanted to make a video of me in a mask or a head of Felix the Cat, based on an image of an actor at Disney in a, in a Mickey Mouse head, and you could see the actor's eye through a mesh, and there was something about his eye that looked humiliated. I would do that, but within Felix the Cat head, because I have this history with Felix the Cat. Or I discovered that Felix the Cat was the first image ever broadcast on TV. They did a kind of test transmission using this Felix the Cat doll. The, the kind of second part of that idea was that you as the viewer would then watch this video of me in the head within a bigger head of Felix the Cat. I'm sort of fascinated by the idea of animal transformation and it began with seeing a Pinocchio and the scene where they're being transformed or converted into donkeys. I always found that really disturbing. The reason that I started to be able to make work is because I realised that it could only come from my experience. I mean for me a commission is the best I can ever ask for because I need a, an objective or a structure. It's, it's an opportunity. My commission for the Arts Council collection is called Tropicus and Tropicus is in a way both a continuation and a departure from the work that I've been doing. It's a continuation in the sense that it's about the different ways in which the archival makes a, a presence in time-based work, you know. And I wanted this time to find other forms of archival traces to use, landscape in particular, you know. And it's important for Tropicus because Tropicus is about Plymouth. And Plymouth is the archival trace because Plymouth is this remarkable space that really sits pivotally at the centre of all sorts of maritime histories. There's a sense in which a, a commission affirms, it says to you, and to a broader polity, you know, uh, that someone thinks that you are quite literally worth it. <laughs> and it's important for me because so much of the work that I was involved with certainly in the 80s, continued and tried to do in the 90s, was about trying to widen the definition of what constituted a national culture. You know, so to arrive in a moment when you're included in a collection and an Arts Council collection at that suggests the transformations one wished for are beginning to take place. The work is a bronze sculpture of an approximation of a Dago ballerina. And I've done a few of these because it's part of a sort of narrative of how I could bring Dago's ballerina to life and make her explore the institution of art. So in these different scenarios, she looks around the gallery, she has a cigarette. And in this one that I'm making now for the Arts Council collection, she falls asleep and she hides behind a blue cube. The blue cube sort of represents contemporary art 
in general. It's like a motif. So if you imagine in a Bugs Bunny cartoon, they were to show contemporary art, they might show a blue cube. The first time I saw a Degas ballerina was in Pittsburgh at the Carnegie Museum. And I was kind of drawn to her. And there's something very sad about her because she stuck to this, this plinth and she watches everyone looking at her. And then every time I'd go to a museum, I'd always hunt out the Degas ballerina and look for her. And I became a bit obsessed with her. And in this obsession, there was this kind of sadness that I wanted to remove her from the plinth and give her a life. And I kind of understood her as a spectator, like all the other visitors in the museum. Yeah, and that's where my obsession with her started. If you're lucky enough to sell an artwork, which is always great, because uh, you get to use the money to make more art. There's always this question of the home, because obviously you want the things you make to be taken care of. And I think the Arts Council collection is the perfect home, because it sort of safeguards that legacy and history. But the Arts Council collection also is really into showing the works and lending the works. So it's a double win, really. It's fantastic to be part of the, a national collection, because it makes your mother very proud. You might not want to use that bit about me, Mum. <laughs>